This is my handmade operating system. I built it from the ground up in a series of videos and so far it has a cell, a compiler and some other stuff. It seemed cool to me at the start, but then I did the mistake of looking at what the OS Dev community has already made. So, what does every impressive project have in common? A nice graphical user interface. To start this off somewhere, I really like the way the Linux kernel is laid out and the way it communicates with the user space. If I reinvented the wheel and wrote my own software, I would have probably risked ending up like this guy. Hello. Rest in peace, Terry. Well, for that reason, I took the porting approach from very early on. I was using very minimal patches and followed Linux system call conventions and numbering. This made the Kavos kernel binary compatible with it, to the point where I could literally copy an Ubuntu binary into it with no issues whatsoever. Most hobbyist OS's cross-compile third-party software with various patches, which is nice for build customization, but inconvenient for me since I wanted to stay that close to Linux. A shortcut I quickly took was using Alpine and its package management. Why did I choose Alpine? Well, back then I was working on a package manager with a friend, and we were compiling with Muscle, and I honestly really liked the way that it was laid out. Binaries linked against it were tiny, and it was overall a really good experience. Apart from it using Muscle, Alpine has repos with everything I needed, so it was really a perfect match. However, Xorg is a massive program and requires a lot of process communication stuff to work properly, which I obviously did not have. All I had were Unix pipes, where you could basically write to one end while someone else reads from the other end. As you can guess, that is definitely not enough for a full graphical server to run. There I was met with this fancy thing called Unix sockets. Sounds scary, right? Because it kinda is. Xorg basically opens one socket while programs running on it connect to said socket and start sending data back and forth. That data includes window position, scaling and other stuff. Thing is, it makes debugging difficult and small mistakes cannot be detected as programs send whatever Xorg flavored garbage they want. Also a lot of software depends on specific error codes being returned as well as polling which I had just hackily implemented. After this monstrosity of an interface was at least working properly, I decided I was ready to test my luck. I installed Xorg from APC, Alpine's package manager, along with TWM, a really old and nostalgic window manager, which you will see later. With my excitement peaking, I tried booting. and I got to a black screen. Looking at the system call logs, polling just got stuck infinitely. In one way, I was happy that Xorg was actually using my frame buffer, which I had to set up in such a way that it was properly exposed to user land, along with the resolution, color map and other things. But I was still disappointed that nothing interesting was going on. The window manager wasn't even booting. After digging my hands way too deep into Xorg source code, I found out that it used Unix signals in order to detect when the Xorg server was ready for clients to connect. What are those signal things you may ask? When a process is running and it needs to be notified about something, it could be sent a signal. That signal stops the execution dead in its tracks and makes it handle the quote-unquote problem. We are responsible for safely saving the process state, pushing the signal handler in and then fixing the mess it might have left. As you might have guessed, I'm making this sound easy although it really wasn't. I had to read into a lot of weird Linux quirks like system call reporting, interruptions or the way it expects the stack to be afterwards. Once all of this was done, I could paint the screen different colors from an actual client. Or could I? Whenever something goes well in this project, there's always a massive roadblock. In this case, sometimes during signal delivery, the process state would be completely destroyed, resulting in it being killed. That happened randomly and so rarely that I couldn't debug it properly, as it always caught me by surprise. 
Until one day I was so annoyed and tired of it that I spent almost 10 hours straight looking into every corner of the codebase for issues. After a lot of guesswork, I came across a spinlock acquisition that happened on a function responsible for translating virtual addresses to physical ones. I won't go too much into detail, but if it was called from very specific contexts and the lock was on a certain state, it would completely vandalize the context that it ran inside. After fixing that, I was finally able to get XIS to run. Isn't this awesome? As cool as this is, look at how much I'm moving my mouse and how perfectly still this thing's eyes are. This is because uh, mouse input events are not being handed over to the X server. Internally, it tries to parse connected mice and keyboards using udev, but I decided to instead do the good old xorg.conf file like we're in 1990. I defined the path of the mouse there, so no dynamic parsing had to be done. So, after implementing the FDEV protocol for the kernel, which was honestly a bit of a pain, the X server was finally happy and recognized our input. By the way, the only document describing FDEV is this plain text file dating back to 2011. This protocol hasn't changed much anyways, it's not like now mice have 29 different buttons or besides. Or... wait. I'll make another video like this covering how it got full OpenSSL to run, along with curl, keyboard input on XORG, sudo terminals, a real terminal emulator, and finally all of them on a real hardware. If you want to see that, subscribe so you are notified when it eventually drops. As always, everything I do for CavOS is open source and licensed under the GPL license. You can check it out on my GitHub. Here are my socials in case any of you care enough to stalk me there, and until the next one, stay safe everyone.